he was a, a a spiritual explorer in a way. He 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 really traveled the world. He sought out gurus, teachers, researchers of all types, and revisioned the Eastern doctrine for Westerners in the Western climate of rationality and science. Mm. Several of the books are really show that relationship very closely between science and spirituality. And the Short Path book is the result of several of us working together to bring together the teachings he has, focusing on the short path, but not leaving out, for instance, the long path. What was his context? What was he seeing in the world? Are there correlations between then and now? And I mean, why now? Why would you recommend this? Paul Brunton, he called himself PB. Yes. Why would you recommend this book on the short path when teachings in non-duality are now so widely available? You know, I am constantly inspired by his one or two sentences about a different aspect of the short path. So I think he's very relevant, actually. I think there's, there can be imbalances, as Mark says, in the short path teachings. And many short path teachers or direct path teachers uh, perhaps assume from where they stand too much about, because it helped them so much, they may not see the development that's still required or the long path balance. So why is this book called The Short Path to Enlightenment when so many of the passages you chose are dedicated to the long path, both its necessity as a prerequisite and its limitations? The long path prepares the ground so that um, a balanced ground so that when the short path is entered into, there won't be um, inflation that le or, or laziness that could even result, inflation or laziness about recognizing one's divinity here and now. I had a, one interview with Paul Brunton, 45 minutes. Sort of like during the interview, the whole short path thing started coming around. And, and right towards the end, um, he, uh, the next people were coming and knocking loudly on the door, and he looked up, and right in that moment, I got it. You know, I got like this complete open silence. You know, was it? You know, and uh, so I really think that was my initiation into the short path. Long path teachings, the self-concern also isolates one from the divine. It does as much to keep us isolated as it does to make us, a, a, you know, you know, you want to get the stamp of approval, like, okay, now you're good enough, and God's going to come and shake your hand, and you'll be, you know, that's the kind of like the long path wish, is some kind of approval of deity. I went to see PB, it was like 1979, it was two years before he died, yes. so he was beginning to get a little more frail, yes. and some of our friends would go and spend time and just kind of help him out around the place, and he had me doing various tasks, and at some point I felt so, like, tar baby, so gummed up in myself, I just, I was on the floor, he was sitting in a chair looking down at me, and I said, I'm sorry PB, it's just the way I am. You know, and that, um, besides being emotional, it, it was kind of, then the beautiful moment that came only after I retired, like 30 years later, was I read in the notebooks, he has one of his quotes, he says, this is the way I am, in quotes, is a sign of somebody ready for the short path. Well, why? Because I had reached a point of self-acceptance, you know, like I'm never going to get to the place where you would find me approvable, you know, like that. And so it's like a willingness to kind of see, like, the long path is always kind of turning in, a, in our own mishigas, I like to say, and it, it never resolves itself in the freedom that it's for. What we're seeking is freedom and to know the divine, but it just doesn't do it. What are the exercises or practices that have proven most significant for you personally and you continue to remember? I was reading the Short Path material and I came across the Remembrance exercise. So at the time I was that, really... What is that? You remember a glimpse, um, right? And the, and the glimpse I 
picked was what is a, a, glimpse? a glimpse is an opening into the spiritual dimension. Okay. So the glimpse I remembered was really early in life where I was, uh, I was on the top of a roof of a house overlooking the Bay Area and I just had this sort of feeling of sadness uh, for the human race or something like that. Like everybody's sort of caught up in their own little world of yeah, thoughts. Nobody you? can see anybody else and in their own. I think it was 19 or something like that. You were 19? So it was, wasn't a glimpse like I was remembering a scene. It was more like a feeling. An awareness of suffering this, and the human condition. Right, right. Some optimism and some feeling of compassion and right, sadness. Right. So when, when you would feel anger or When I get this anger spontaneously emotion, coming up, huh? I would do this remembrance of compassion. So I did that for like six months, and then I went to on a trip to London, uh, and uh, I was at the Tower of London. Yeah. So uh, just spontaneously, I had this experience of this person that I was angry with it was like, also this is the overself, you know. Here's this devotional energy. We just look inside, and I would feel his presence, but also this divinity. You know, it was like. Such and such you? a personality, a.k.a. the overself, you know. Did that shock you? Yeah, in fact, I thought it was sort of, you know, I, it lasted for about 45 minutes. Yes. And I remember at the end, I said, you know, I can't think this positively, this long about this guy. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it's, it's, it really helped me overcome that anger issue. There were long-lasting results that I felt a lot better, you know, about... The short path puts the focus on the my divinity part. In the early days, it was more like, you know, God is in charge, I'm taking refuge in the divine, however. But the, as one gets more on the short path, you start to look in with great devotion towards one's own presence. And the silence is an important aspect of that. Loving recall, loving recall of the presence of the, what PB calls the over-self, the higher self, with a quiet mind. You know, like when you look at the picture of someone you love, I mean, you could feel like, oh, some kind of warmth comes up, but sometimes it's the, the attraction it stills the mind, actually, it stops you from any other, you, you don't want to go anywhere else, you just want to be with the beloved. So the remembrance is to be done in some fashion like that, as recommended. Part of what the short path is, does for people is it points out how much in our life, as ordinary life, even when we call it long path life, the divine is there evident, but we're not taught that that is our own higher self present in us. The short path depends on naturalness and spontaneity, quite the opposite of the long path's discipline an effort. The individual who turns aside from the latter at the right moment does so, not because he spurns them or denies them or rejects them, but because they do not serve him any longer somehow. It's really a question of how much can you actually turn the 180 degrees that Mark recommended, I mean PB recommended and Mark said, how much can you, how much are you ready to actually make that turn? Because if there are things constantly pulling your attention back. This is really like an attention game. How much are we locked onto the situations and people and desires and goals, ambitions that are they totally occupying us or are we doing this in an intuitive way from within that's the spontaneity of the higher self flowing out? Sometimes the turning point is your personality that you invest so much energy in has totally run amok and totally failed. And you know, Jeff was saying yes. earlier. No, that's good. And that's a turn. That's a turning point for a lot of people. I mean, um, the uh, you simply can no longer hope that this got this person that you're associated with is going to work out as a as a credible <laughs> fiction. You know. <laughs> so that's a, another way people come to the to take up the short path. I would say. Suffering. The short path is like an invocation. You, you, you're striking this inner chord, like the over-self as best as I can envision it in myself. 
and it, it sets up some kind of magical response. There's no, you can't cause, you can't will something that's the freedom from your individual willing by willing it. So this, the short path too is an exercise that one does, but it is in resonance with our true nature, so it will invoke that grace. TV says at first he learns that he's personally responsible for his thoughts and actions for their results in himself and outside it in his destiny. Then he is led to the discovery of the short path and that he is God's responsibility. Well, I think you turn everything over to the higher power, your destiny, your choices, your, the lessons that you learn from life. The, uh, you know, he has another quote where he says, it, it, com it goes from a journey to God to a journey in God meaning that you're just surrounded by divinity. And it's a reciprocal relationship, you know. You're under tutelage. Again, you know, this connection between the long path, they don't really feel that they're in polarity to me. There's something extremely fluid between them. So that, for example, when you, when you see that you're God's responsibility, you are still responsible for certain ethical decisions in your life and like that. Right? There was one last thing I wanted to talk about, and that's love. So can we talk about love? Because in essence, in the end, PB seems to be saying that the success of the quest depends upon one's love for one's soul above all else, and one's willingness to devote one's life to it. And if I may read another favorite passage, one thing about the short path which must be firmly impressed on the mind of the student is that its success depends on how much love someone brings to it. If the student has ever had a moment's glimpse of the over-self and fallen more deeply in love with it than with anything else, he or she will be able to fulfill the basic requirement of all short path teachings. I think you alluded to this before, Jeff. Well, I think the whole world is Brahman realization is actually that the world is love. It's not only made out of love, it's in the context of love. It's all, it's all good.